YouTube, how are you all doing? Um, a big thanks to uh, Hampshire Pipe, he's uh, sent me an email with a suggestion to check somebody out. Um, the guy's called Long Lost, I've just been watching a selection of his videos sort of thing. I'm following his blending, his blending experiment very closely. It's uh, good to see other people, other people kind of getting out there and having to go at making their own tobaccos. It's easy to pick up all your constituent parts. You can make pretty much anything by tobaccos available. They're available in the UK, so they're bound to be available in the States. Long Lost spent $100 and had a big box of stuff from uh, Pipes and Cigars, I think it was. So um, I'm just quickly going to go through um, the process I use when I'm creating tobaccos. I mean, I make tobaccos for myself, I make some blends for specific customers, I do blends for the shop, um, and I'm, can, I'm always experimenting. I mean, just to give you an idea, um, most of the stuff in this tub here is all blends I've made. There is some constituent parts and a few other tobaccos in there, but on the whole, most of that lot in there is blends that I've been experimenting on. Um, I keep various notebooks, um, everything has its own like unique code and things like that. I won't show you the notebooks because it's kind of my, uh, it's my little, my little black book. Well, I'll show you them. It's another one of these. So, um, but anyway, yeah, so I make tobaccos for a lot of people. Um, blending is, uh, it, it can be a long process. Um, I mean, I, if I get a tobacco right in two or three goes, then I'm, I assume I've done something wrong and I still tinker and tweak with them. Even if I go back to one of the earlier ones I came up with, I still don't let it go. I mean, um, the first tobacco I created for the shop, uh, Gauntlet's Nottingham Blend, um, I mean, the, the, one that's for sa the one that's on sale is probably version three or version four. Um, but to be honest, I have about eight, nine different varying recipes for that tobacco. I still can't let it go. Um, I still mess around with it. Um, I've taken it to whole other extremes and back again. A few other tobaccos have been born through experiments, through creations of that, none of which are, are available. So, um, let's say in this video, I'm mainly going to be talking about um, English blended tobaccos. I can, I'll quickly now briefly talk about aromatics. <laughs> The way I see it is I did a video on the rough guide of aromatics. Um, you can break these down into two, two main categories. Um, I hate to generalise things, but you have American style aromatics, which are things like your black Cavendishes with little amounts of Burleys and Virginias in there. They're then heavily, heavily cased and most of the smoking experience comes from the flavourings added to them. So these are simple and easy tobaccos to make. Um, one of the ones I mainly use one of the ratios I tend to go for a lot, which produces a tobacco that looks like this, is this is pretty much um, 75 to 80% um, Black Cavendish. Uh, I get this from various different places, um, different grades sort of things, some are a little bit smoother and some are a little bit more flavoursome than, other, than others. Um, so I say 75, 80% Black Cavendish, I then use either, depending if I want the mixture to be fairly mild, I'll just use a lovely golden sort of very, very, very light Virginia in there just to act as a burning agent. Um, that Virginia will absorb any toppings and casings very, very well along with the Black Cavendish. If you want to give it a little bit more strength, you can use a couple of Burleys and things like that in there, something that carries a little bit more nicotine. Um, and then where flavorings are concerned, you know, what I tend to use, I mean, I've been messing around with flavorings for ages, is I've come up with a couple of different ways to flavor them. Um, probably one of the most, resourceful ones I've come up with is flavouring things with alcohol. Um, I mean I did a I made a very very rough so like scotch cut cake last here mixture um, and all I did was I put it in a in a jar one of these sealable jars sort of thing um, and inside that I had a shot glass inside with probably half a shot of um, I can't remember which whiskey it was but some whiskey inside there. Uh, left it with the top seal um, left it with the top sealed for a while and the flavours just kind of infused into it every time you opened it you just instantly hit with the, the, the flack of alcohol basically and it soaked into the tobacco very very well um, a very very light flavouring more of in the aroma and subtle essences it's more like a topping rather than a casing 
But um, on to casings. Now, a lot of these tobaccos are flavoured when they're when they're produced. The Cavendishes are flavoured inside. So if you want to put flavourings on top, you, you need to get a way of getting a very natural, nice flavouring on there. So from doing some experiments, speaking to a few guys, um, that a few of the tobacco manufacturers managed to get hold of little bits of information. And like I say, a lot, a lot of trial and error. I eventually found alcohol extracts. So this is a chocolate extract in 45% alcohol. Um, it's not an overly strong flavour. You do need to use quite a lot of this stuff. But it just... Oh, it smells like a chocolate liqueur, basically. And that's only 45%. You could drink this stuff. And the best thing is, I don't see any duty raised on it or anything like that. But you can get a whole range of these flavours. I've got a peppermint. There you go. Peppermint and chocolate. Um, almond extracts. Rose water. I've got a, a decent selection of these things. Um, I've been experimenting with a few other things I tried using. Uh, we've got some whole cloves of garlic here. I tried using cinnamon sticks. I've tried using all sorts to kind of try and infuse tobaccos. I've tried making my own um, alcohol-based extracts from these things, but they didn't particularly didn't really go, didn't really work the way I wanted them to. So it's it's all been trial and error. But those flavoured extracts work a treat. Depending on how much tobacco you're producing, if you've got a very, very small sort of like 50, 100 gram ratio, your best bet is you get a little atomizer, which I don't seem to have at hand, I think they're downstairs. Get a little atomizer, you can pretty much pick them up for taking your perfume and things on the plane and stuff like that. I got mine from Boots, I've done with a lid. Um, so you get a little atomizer, spray a little bit over the top of it, you've got a nice light topping sort of thing. Um, if you wanted to case them more, um, I have big, big mixing bowls at the back there. Um, I tend to pour a bit in, really, really mix it up, take your time, your hands get goopy. You've got to make sure you've, you've distributed it evenly. Um, if you find out you've put too much on and it's sopping wet, you can leave it to air dry. But if you want to speed the process up, I've got um, it's kind of a... It's almost like a wok sort of thing. You put my tobacco in a wok, very, very low heat, keep moving it round, keep moving it round, keep picking it up, squeezing it, making sure it's the moisture level you've got. Um, the heat makes the tobacco relatively soft as well. So if it feels like it's the perfect consistency, the perfect moisture that you want, chances are it's too dry. Respray over the top, jobs are good. And that will make you a nice American style aromatic. Um, like I say, this is, this is one I... This is one I've been tinkering with for a while. This is my main experiment with this stuff. This is um, my peppermint and chocolate. Uh, a few of the guys at the pipe club have been lucky. Have been the only people who've tried this, to be honest. It smokes nice. It's got a strong peppermint aroma, and a very very subtle kind of chocolate twang to it. So, <clears throat> like I say, flavouring for American style aromatics. Very very simple. Sprayed alcohol essence. Jobs are good. And use whiskey. Use alcohols. Um, Things in alcohol's good, the alcohol evaporates and it kills any bacteria that's inside, so it still keeps your tobacco and keeps mold away, keeps anything that's in the flavourings from basically generating mold on your tobacco. Like I say, this is only an experiment I've been doing over the last uh, probably what, 18 months sort of thing. I've been tinkering around trying to learn how to flavour tobaccos. So a simple base, predominantly black Cavendish, small amount of highlights in there, say Virginia's or Burley's, anything to carry it through. If you want to do a um, kind of a golden Cavendish, you've pretty much got it there. Um, I have been trying to create my own Cavendishes from raw leaf, using sorbitol and glycerin and honeys and maples and sugar solutions. But so far, all I've generated is jars full of green mold. Um, you go on to the other classification of aromatics. I started a whole debate on this one. I did my um, uh, rough guide to aromatics videos. There's many different styles. Um, these you can also make, you can use it by taking um, like complex mixtures of tobaccos and mixing them together and you just use a light topping or a very very small amount of uh, casings in there you don't need to use Now we move on to English tobaccos So English tobaccos, um, non-aromatics are much better for classification of it really now, when it comes down to making these, it's um, you've got a lot more choices, basically. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is you, you can't go into this willy-nilly. Uh, you need to know what it is that you want to create in the first place. 
So if you wanted to make kind of a, a Balkan mixture or kind of a very strong English with Latakia, you want something with a subtle amount, the very like, delicate amounts of figs and spices from Perique, or if you want something with a big big whack of it sort of thing like you get from Three Nuns or some of the tobaccos that I make, you basically you need to know what it is you want to make in the first place. So once you've got an idea of where you want your tobacco to go and what sort of thing you want to, you want to create, you, you start at the bottom basically. Uh, the most important thing is, is, is the base, it needs a good foundation. So again, thinking about the tobacco you want to make, if you want to make a fairly, a fairly mild, more subtle, delicate tobacco, you want the spice tobaccos to produce the, um, the punchier, more higher edge of the flavours, you're better off starting with a milder base. Now you've got, in essence, three options for a milder base. So we'll start with the obvious one, is a Virginia base. Now this is just a, this is just a gold Virginia sort of thing. Um, it's made by Planter, it's an African grade, um, it's got some lovely subtleness, some lovely sweetness to it, um, so you can use Virginia, you could use Virginia as a base. Um, of course your other option that you've got is there's nothing stopping you using Orientals, Turkish and tobaccos like that. These um, will allow you to build up more flavours, they have, they have a nice characteristic by themselves. But as a base, there you don't really want to use them on their own very often. Um, I've tried in the past; it does work, but it's it's a lot of faffing around and doing things unusual with the blend to make it work with a Turkish Oriental style base. But you have that as an option, and then of course they're fairly low in in nicotine. Um, if you want something that's a fairly like golden tobacco still, and you want a bit of oomph to it, there's nothing stopping you using a Burley. So that's your options if you want to make a a lighter base tobacco. Now if you want something with a little bit more oomph and a little bit more punchy and a little bit more power to it, um, there is nothing stopping you using darker tobaccos. So there's nothing stopping you using fire and flu cure dark Virginias. Um, and at the same time if there's nothing stopping you using again twists. I mean that's a that's in a flake form, breaks down beautifully. Can use some sliced twist for a base. Um, of course, there's other options open to you if you want a strong tobacco. Most people class this as a spice. Um, this is Kentucky Fica Burley. This does make a very, very good base to a tobacco. Um, there's a few lighter bits that didn't quite get Fica quite so much, so it, it burns quite freely. But mixing it with something a little bit lighter will give you a good footing. So, so like I say, the most important aspect of any any tobacco is the foundation. It's the base of the blend. You can say you can use anything if you wanted to, um, but predominantly people use Virginias and Burleys, and then some some tobaccos use Orientals and Turkish as part of the base and as well as the flavouring. So you've got your base, um, you, you've got your footing of where to start. Um, I predominantly, when I'm first creating a blend, I'll put tobaccos in an even ratio, see how they go, and tweak them about. But the next, the next level you've got to do is to is to build up the tobaccos in your blend. Now you use this for a number of different reasons. What tobaccos you use when you're building your blend up depends really on what it is you want. You've got to take into account how much nicotine you want this tobacco to carry. Um, if you want this to be a fairly fairly milder sort of tobacco, you want to steer clear of the more stronger, more pungent, um, high high ratios of nicotine tobacco. So things like Kentucky, which I just mentioned, Perique carries a lot of kick to it. Um, if you're going to use cigar leaf in there, the thicker, darker leaves generally tend to have more nicotine in them. Um, cigar leaf adds a lot of nicotine anyway. Um, other things you've got to consider when you're building up your blend is the heat the temperature of the smoke. Um, the last thing you want to do is create something that burns your mouth a lot. You see this with um, Virgi like Virginia blends and predominantly Burley blends. If, the, if they're not blended right and they're a little bit dry, it sets your mouth on fire, basically. So another thing you've got to take into consideration is temperature. If your tobacco is, is a little bit too hot, you want to put darker tobaccos in there. You want to go for some darker Virginias. Put some Kentucky in, try a bit of Burley, try a bit of um, Latakia, try some Cavendish. Um, you can get some um, sweetened and unsweetened varieties. Use some, um, say, some un unsweetened uh, black Cavendishes in there. I refer to them as English Cavendish, but 
it's basically just a, an unsweetened version of black cavendish um there's there's other things that come into it as well is you've got to consider texture um do you want your smoke to be quite creamy or do you want it to have a slightly drier taste to it it's all down to, to what you want to create and what tobaccos you put in drastically affects how all these characteristics are and ultimately all that builds up together into the whole profile of the tobacco. So choosing your, your spice tobaccos to go in there are, are very, very important. Um, you aren't making an aromatic, you can't just put flavourings over this, so you've got to build up your tobaccos and you've got to build it up in a way that, that suits you. Um, there's nothing stopping you when you're making your blends from using other like slightly flavoured, slightly top tobaccos in there. Um, an example of that is using things like some Lakeland tobaccos. I mean, there's some Coniston unscented in there. I've got a tub of Coniston scented down here. Um, I believe kicking about in here somewhere. I even have some like Grassmere flake for more floral notes. Basically, use other tobaccos. Um, Things like all the golden slices is a great one to use. St. Bruno is a very good one to use. It's got that lovely kind of like um, f floral, soapy, Lakeland flavour, but lots of power and strength from the dark Virginias and the Kentuckys and things like that that are actually in that tobacco in the first place. So once you've once you've built your tobacco up, um, like I say, when, when I first create a blend, I use very, very, very generalised sort of... Um, ratios of how I want the tobacco. I've got a rough idea of, of what I want the blend to be and how what sort of consistency I want my tobaccos to be in. But in my first blend I use very, very generalised sort of like ten percent this, fifteen percent this, twenty five percent this, fifty percent this. I don't break it down much smaller than that to start off with. So once I've created my first kind of the beta blend, version one as it was, um, I'll mix the tobacco up I tend to put it in a bag that's relatively open, I scrunch it up very, very tight, and I walk around with it in my pocket for half a day. Let the heat get into it, things like that. Um, you allow the tobaccos to, to meld very, very, not very well. It allows the flavours to at least begin to meld. I may smoke a bit as soon as I've made it, just to see how it tastes like out of the, out of the traps, as it were. But then what I've created, it's, it's been carried around and crushed in a bag for a, a day, half a day, I smoke it again see if there's any development in flavour. Then it will then get transferred into an airtight bag and I then leave it labelled up what it is sort of thing. I, um, I always write down every blend I make goes down in a black book or a blending book at work or a computer system I've built at home. Um, all that information is stored in there. So I've tried it when I've made it, I've tried it a couple of days afterwards. I leave it to sit for a week. We try it for a week. Um, I try it again after a week and see if there's been much improvement or if any, you know, there's any sort of like horrible, horrible flavours that have come out from the, the mixture that hasn't gone very well. We basically, see how it goes from there. I then leave it for another week. Try it two weeks later. See it again if it's um, progressed any more, if it's changed any. Usually by the second week, I've got a rough idea of where the tobacco's going with how quick the flavours have changed. I can then then sit down and think to myself, right, so this is this is how it is at the moment. It isn't ending particularly well. Um, so then you start tweaking with it. Start removing one, one tobacco, try a, an alternative version of the same thing. See if you get anything a little bit more impressive the second time you, you mix it with a different tobacco. If I'm happy with the tobaccos in there, it basically just comes down to just to light tweaks. What if I remove half of that and add a bit more of this? And what if I use a little bit of this? Things like that. You can you can tweak it slightly. You can go through the same process again. Try it when you've made it. Carry it around in my pocket for a day. Smoke it again. Smoke it in a week. Smoke it in two weeks. But then in the same time, I'm still going back to the first tobacco and seeing how that's progressing. Because some tobaccos, if you leave them to sit for four weeks, they change so much. But then they remain predominantly predominantly the same with very subtle variations. Some tobaccos like meld together very well in a couple of days. If they melt well together in a couple of days, it's perfect. But if a tobacco kind of only hits its peak after three weeks, then you know that the blend you've got will be good in three weeks sort of thing. So yeah, I just then keep tweaking and changing and tweaking and changing and I get a few people to try a few things. A couple of uh, guinea pigs, I call them in the shop, get to try a few bits. Some come back and throw tobacco back at me, but that's that's just the way it goes sort of thing. It's all down to, to trial and error. So once you've got your, your 
initial blend down, you can start tweaking, you can start adding a bit, start removing a bit. Um, once you've got the blend to how you want it, you've then got other options. You can either just mix it up, put it into a tub so it's a relatively loose fill, and then it's fine. Your second option is to, um, like I mentioned before with crumble cakes, is you can attempt to press cut tobacco down. Now, I don't know if I should try and use things like sorbitol or glycerin and things like that, but I don't. I try and avoid adding things to non-aromatics. When they clump together, they tend not to not to meld too well. Um, I mean, not to stay together too well. The flavors the flavors mix are much faster. You get a much more complex sort of smoke out of it by putting it under some pressure. But I can't get the tobaccos to stick. Now, my first crumble cakes I made, I didn't have a press. So all I used was um, basically four cigar box lids from SLB sliding lid boxes, two of those, two of those, tobacco in the middle, big G clamps, put it under as much pressure as I can to the point where it's bending the wood, the wood's warping sort of thing from the pressure. Then put it in a big airtight sealed bag, seal it up, leave it, give it, I don't know, leave it for two weeks, try it after two weeks, break it open. Um, see how it is. It tends to break apart very easily. Um, but you do find that you've kind of you've forced the maturation cycle. In some instances, you might have even kickstarted a little bit of fermentation. As many of you know, that's how perique and things like that are formed. Cigar leaves are fermented just by big stacks of tobacco. The pressure forcing down on the bottom helps generate the heat and things like that, and it basically forces the tobacco to ferment. <laughs> That's basically the process I go through. Um, for being a, a blender at home, that process can be quite expensive. Um, as you saw, um, oh dear, I forgot the gentleman's name, Long Lost Zero Zero's video, um, he spent $100, $100 on tobaccos to blend with in four ounce bags. And I know what you mean, it is quite obsessive. I'm not gonna get every single one of these out, but just to give you an idea of what I have at home just for experimenting with, I spend I'm not going to tell you how much money I spend on tobacco. I spend way too much money on tobacco. Um, banking charges for overdraft limits and things like that prove this for a start. So I'm quickly going to go through some of the tobaccos I blend with at home. Gold Virginia, um, African grade, some fire cured Burleys, some Kentucky. Um, one version of uh, Turkish which I use which is Robert from Robert McConnell. Uh, I have contacted them several times to find out what it is, but they've never got back to me. Um, some unflavoured sliced brown twist. That stuff is strong, but it uh, makes for a very nice smoke. I've got some other very, very low-grade Virginia. This has kind of a... It's been like sugar cased a little bit. It smells a little bit like maple out of the packet. Um, I've then also got different brown twist. This is a sliced rum twist. Um, I've used that in quite a few tobaccos I've created over the years. It's a strong, interesting tobacco. It's flavoured, but it's, I wouldn't really call it an aromatic. One of the Lakeland specials, uh, this is Coniston, um, the scented version, so it smells like old ladies soaps and things like that. Some more flavoured Virginias, this has got a lovely kind of like rose Turkish delight topping on it. This stuff, which I did a video about, before this is a Nicaraguan pure Ligero leaf. This stuff is whoa, strong, spicy, flavoursome, it's gorgeous stuff. Uh, some of the unscented version of Coniston still has a soapy floral smell to it. Uh, bulk American Black Cavendish, uh, it's made from AAA Burley and Virginia's. This is a lame Black Cavendish. Very, very sweet, smooth, and sickly. It's got sort of a Kind of a generic sweet flavour to it. Um, then one of my other favourite tobaccos to use in mixtures, this is Black Spice. This is a cinnamon and nutmeg flavoured Black Cavendish. Not wet and goopy, it's quite dry. This stuff is, is used in a lot of tobaccos which I create. Um, I then have things like Grassmere Flake, which I say I use for some floral notes and things. I've got a load more of this stuff. This is just neat, pure, air cured burley. Um, moving on to the more interesting things, full jar of uh, Louisiana St. James Wood Perique. Um, a favourite of a lot of people on YouTube, I do use this in a few tobaccos. This, believe it or not, is uh, seven tins worth of all its golden slices. Uh, 
what have we got just here? No, this is actually a, a blend I've made. No, what have we got here? Like I say, some dark fire cured Virginia in a flake form. Um, another black Cavendish. Um, this is a uh, Robert McConnell's Carolina black Cavendish. This stuff's um, a, a slightly drier, but it's got a more sweeter taste. It's not as creamy as the other black Cavendish that I use. Well, I do have that in there. Uh, what else have we got down here? This stuff, dark Virginia Cavendish. I um, have tried to use this in blends before. Um, if you go back to my pinning down Cavendish videos, there's a whole video on this stuff. Um, very, very popular down in uh, Cornwall. The Cornish guys seem to love the stuff, apparently they buy most of it. Um, I've then got a few other flavoured tobaccos. This is a, a honey cased golden Cavendish. There is some darker, darker bits of Cavendish in there as well, but on the whole it's a lighter Cavendish. Um, I've then got some Cypriot Latakia, coarse cut version. Um, I do have a shag cut somewhere, I think it might still be downstairs. And that's pretty much it. And other things is broken cigars. If um, a couple of your cigars have got broken and you're a hoarder of cigars like I am, shred them up, cigar filler is brilliant. So. Um, I still haven't finished yet, there's still more to go. I've got um, basically Samuel Gowers RC Turkish. This is a pure Izmir, Izmir shag. The Robert McConnell stuff is very, very dry. This stuff is a lot, smells a lot more sour and is a lot damper and a lot creamier. But the Robert McConnell stuff is gorgeous. I've been using that for a long time. Um, I've then got some other, some other scented tobaccos. There's some Bosun Cut Plug. And I've also got some Gowarth and Hoggis number seven, which is kind of a, it's it's a dark Virginia, but it does have the typical Gowarth and Hoggis sort of, kind of almost sweet and soapy sort of aroma to it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much what I use for blending. Um, obviously this is just what I use for experimenting with at home. Um, in the shop I have lots of other flavoured tobaccos to draw upon. So yeah, basically that's it. This is that's how I how I create a tobacco. Um, the biggest, most important aspect of it is is making sure that you mix your tobaccos thoroughly. Um, there's nothing worse in a blend than having a whole chunk of Latakia that comes out in a bowl rather than just half a bowl. So start off with a good footing, a good foundation. Build up your complexities with your tobacco while bearing in mind how it's gonna, how easily it smokes, how hot it smokes. Um, what sort of flavours you're going to be getting from it, the texture of the smoke and things like that. And then when it comes down to maturing and ageing of your tobaccos, time. You can't rush the hands of time. It applies to cigars, pipe tobaccos. should apply to cigarettes and rolling tobaccos, to be honest. But nobody seems to give a monkeys on that commercial side of these things. So yeah, mature things. Keep trying them. Come back to it. Leave it. Come back to it. Leave it. Come back to it. Find out when its peak is, when the minimal amount of time it needs before it starts hitting that point where the flavour is perfect. Everything's mixed in together well. There's no point just mixing it, smoking it, and thinking that's how it is. It's the same when you smoke things. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this a lot. It's not your first impressions that count. It's the lasting impressions that matter. I mean, obviously, I make these things. Um, I make these things, these tobaccos for customers. I make it commercially for the shop I work in. Um, so, the tobacco always tasting the same is a very, very big, important aspect of, of blending, basically. So, yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you found that useful, and I hope uh, none of my friends who work for other blending companies get annoyed that I've shared this information with you. Um, most of this I've I've learnt myself from reading, but predominantly it's all down to uh, experimentation. So if you want to get into into blending, us in the UK we sell most of our blending tobaccos online. Um, any any ratio, any amount from 25 gram upwards, sort of thing. Over in the states, pipe and cigars do. I'm assuming a lot of other people do. But if you want to have a go at creating a blend, um, you've mixed two or three other tins, pre mixtures together. You like what you've got, give it a try give it a whirl um so yeah like i say thank you very very much for watching a lot more information on my blog at mrtobacco.co.uk but for now this is me and this is goodbye <laughs>